Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God some praise. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We magnify you. We worship you, Lord. And we adore you, Father God. Hallelujah. We honor you today, Father, for all that you have done. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Forever you are the same. We worship and adore you.
Come on, magnify his name. Come on and do it. Come on, magnify his name. Magnify his name. Lift him up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Magnify his name. Turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel according to St. Luke. St. Luke, chapter number 18. St. Luke, chapter 18, and we're going to start reading at verse number 35. I want to thank everybody for standing in honor of the reading of God's word, those of you that can stand. St. Luke chapter 18 and verse number 35. If you're there, let me hear you say, I'm there. The word of the Lord says, and it came to pass, that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain man sat by the wayside. What was he doing? What was he doing? He was begging. He was begging. He was begging. Please help. Help a poor man. I'll take anything you can give me. Begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he stopped asking, and what did he do? He asked what it meant. Where is everybody going? And they told him, verse 37, read verse 37. They told him what? Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. Sister Gina, that's all he needed to hear. <laughs> verse number 38, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Somebody just say that, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But instead of listening to them, the Bible says, he cried so much the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. When he was come near, he asked him, saying, What? Will thou that I should do unto thee? It, it, it just got personal, didn't it? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. I, 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 I feel like when he said, Lord, I feel like he said, Lord. Anybody ever had to call him? And, and you say, you say, Lord, like it's a question mark. Lord, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Jesus saith unto him, receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight followed him glorifying God and all the people when they saw it 
gave praise unto God. I'm going to get my thought from verse number 41 where Jesus asked him, what wilt thou have, what wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. I want to use for a subject this morning, there is a miracle in your mouth. L look at somebody and just tell them, there is a miracle in your mouth. Just, just say, Lord. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, 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 there's a miracle in your mouth. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, Somebody already figured it out. J just say hallelujah. Now, Bartimaeus almost missed his miracle. And the reason he almost missed his miracle is because when he started to speak out and call on Jesus, people told him, to be quiet. Before I get into this sermon, I have a concern. I am concerned that too many so-called church folks are mean. Too many so-called church folks lack empathy. They lack understanding. They lack compassion. There are way too many church bullies. Some so-called church folks are possessed with evil spirits that need to be cast out. They, they are so selfish that they are useless in the areas of outreach and ministry because they repel souls. They prevent souls. They deter souls. They shun souls. They're just like the people in the text who told Bartimaeus to be quiet. Let me tell you something. God cannot use them because they are egotistic, self-absorbed, self-centered, and ineffective in ministry and unsuitable for kingdom use. They are self-righteous, mean-spirited, vindictive, and spiritually dangerous. And I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. And so should you. As a matter of fact, I rebuke bitterness. I rebuke wrath. I rebuke anger. I rebuke clamor. I rebuke evil speaking. I rebuke malice, according to Ephesians 4.31, and I cancel the plans of the enemy. I end every curse spoken by evil people and by the devil. I end it right now in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of division, and I loose the spirit of unity. And I pray that God expose the spiritual wickedness in high places. I pray that God expose principalities. I pray that God expose powers. I pray that God expose rulers of darkness and, and spiritual wickedness in high places in the name of Jesus. If you agree, come on and praise God with me right now. In the name of Jesus.
Why did I say all of that? Write this down. The people who need Jesus need a soft touch, a kind-hearted approach, and an empathetic reception. The people who need Jesus. They, they, they need people that are soft. They need people who are kind-hearted. Come here, come Come, how can I love you? How, how can I help you? They need people that have empathy. Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 35, by this shall men know that ye are my disciples. Not by how mean we are, but by the love that we have one to another. John said, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Second John chapter 1 verse 5 says, And now I beseech you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto you, but that ye which had from the beginning that we love one another. Can you just look around the room and say, I love? Just say, I love. You don't even have to say you. Just say, I love. <laughs> I love. We love. Listen, let me tell you why that's so important. Because did you know, according to a study released in 2019, suicide attempts among black children and teenagers have increased by 73% since 1991. According to the data published in the Journal of Pediatrics, suicide is the second leading cause of death for teenagers in this country. But over the, the period, suicide attempts decreased among teens in every ethnic group except African Americans. Self-reported suicide attempts among white, teeners, white teenagers fell by 7.5% between 1991 and 2017. That was before the pandemic. My prayers include the teenagers of this community. And I'm asking God, no, I'm going to tell you like he told me. He has assigned this church as a saving station for children, for the unchurched. And if we are going to please God, we're going to have to accept and face reality and prepare our arms to open wide and to prepare our hands to open wide and to prepare, prepare our hearts to open wide, to love the people that God wants to send here. God is preparing us. That conference we had yesterday, the conversations that we must have, the hard conversations that we must have, go beyond the baptismal pool. Because God wants to send people in here, and we need to know, hey, what's going on? What are you dealing with? Why do you feel? You shouldn't feel that way. No, why? Why? What's going on, teenager? What's going on, young girl? What's going on, young man? What's going on, husband? What's going on, wife? God is preparing us. Today's sermon is about Another one of Jesus' miracles, but it's not just another miracle. It's about the interactions of the miracle. These were real people with real problems and real hopes and dreams. See, uh, we have created this scenario in church where we expect people to come in here all whole spiritually with just a few little issues that prayer can fix. 
I feel a real anointing right now. And, and when people come, we rush them. Hey, we're going to baptize you. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And, and before they get to tell you what they're really going through, we're saying goodbye. See you next week. Well, what about tomorrow? What about the home that they have? What about the trauma that drove them in here? What about their real life situation? I'm just trying to tell you that Jesus was dealing with real life situations in this miracle. Like us. Like many of us when we got saved, we had real issues. And it was those real issues that brought us to Jesus. I want you and I to see ourselves in this text because I can see us. At a glance, the miracle seems like just another day in the life of Jesus. But I want you to write this down. We can create miracles by professing our faith in Jesus and his ability to do the impossible. Now, a deeper dive into this text would reveal lots of voices. There were the voices of the hundreds of needy people. There were the voice, there's the voice of Bartimaeus and maybe another person with him, according to Matthew. There, there are the voices of the people near Bartimaeus and the voice of Jesus. Let's, let's look at this text again. Uh, the Bible says, I'm in verse number 35, the Bible lets us know, uh, Luke says he was coming uh, uh, near Jericho and, and he encounters a blind man that again was begging. Uh, verse 36, uh, he heard the multitude. He heard the crowd. He heard the people. Now, we know that everybody coming to Jesus had a problem. We know that the multitude consisted of sick people, of, of, of people that had some form of disability. We know that they were coming to get their healing. Can I get a witness? Some of them were possessed. Some of them had all sorts of things that this was, this was to see, this was something to see. And so they were there to get a healing. Hmm. And, and so uh, uh, they were all trying to get Jesus' attention because they wanted him to touch grandmama, touch cousin, touch my brother. You know, people were tearing roofs off of houses to get to Jesus. So the fact that he was there was, was a double miracle because they didn't have to go anywhere to get to him. He's in town. He's passing by. Miracles are happening right now. He's touching. Things are happening wherever Jesus went, the crowd went because the miracles went. So uh, uh, the man stopped begging and, and he had heard enough about Jesus that he knew if Jesus is anywhere near, I'm going to try. Everybody say, I'm going to try. He said, I'm going to try to get my blessing. I'm going to try. I, I don't have anybody to take me to him. I, I don't have any friends around, so I'm going to do the best. I'm going to use what I have. And what did he have? He had a voice. He said, I'm going to use my voice. And so he started crying out. He started saying, uh, he said, thou, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He's trying to talk louder than everybody else. Have you ever had to talk louder than everybody else? And so the reason they were telling him to be quiet is because he was talking over them. Sometimes you can't let folks stop you. You can't let folk discourage you. you just, instead of doing less, somebody say, instead of doing less, you need to do more. The Bible tells us that's exactly what he did. It, they, they told him, hey, man, you need to hold down. You, isn't it interesting that they needed Jesus? And they were telling him, not now, because they wanted to get their blessing. They didn't care whether or not he got his. But, but he said, the Bible says that instead of doing less, he cried out to more. 
if he was like, uh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they said, hey, hold it down. He said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they said, whoa. He said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Because he said, I am not going to miss this opportunity. Jesus don't pass by here every day. Jesus, Jesus, I'm not used to this. I'm going, I'm going to try to get my blessing right now. Some of us are sitting on our praise. You holding your praise back and you ought to be praising God because as you praise God, you just might get his attention. Somebody just start praising him. Just open your mouth and just say hallelujah. Now listen, you may be sitting next to somebody that don't feel like praising God, but don't let that stop you. Just say hallelujah one more time. Just say, Lord, I need you one more time. Just say, Lord, bless me one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So Jesus then calls him. Jesus says, tell me what you want. And, 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 and the man told him the one thing that he needed Jesus to do. Can I ask you a question? What is your one thing? It, what, what is the one thing that you want the Lord to do for you? Would it be guidance? Lord, if Jesus said, what, what would you have me to do? Would you say, Lord, I need guidance? If that's you, just wave at me. If you would say, I need guidance. It, it, would you say, I have a love problem. I have a relationship problem. I, I, I need you to work that out. If, if it's a financial blessing, if you need him to do something financial, just wave at me. Just say, I would say, Lord, I need you to work this financial. Is it an employment need? Do you need God to go on your job or do you need a job? Uh, is, it, is it school pressure? Are you concerned about school, uh, about the school of someone else? Is it health? Do you have a health concern? Would you say, Lord, I need you to heal me or I need you to heal my loved one. Is it a family situation? If, if it's a family situation, just wave at me. Uh, is it a safety concern? Oh, I'm worried about the safety of my family or the safety of my neighborhood. Is it coping with grief? Is it the salvation of others? What is your one thing? Well, what Bartimaeus did was interesting because in essence he said by referring to him as the son of David in essence he's saying Jesus I believe you can do anything I believe you are who people have said you are I believe you can do anything and and by by being specific he's saying Jesus I know you can do this thing there's a difference between believing God for anything and believing God for a uh, this thing. Who am I preaching to today? Who, who am I preaching to online that has a this thing? When you began to pray, and you're not just praying some general prayer, but you are praying for a specific kind of guidance. And you're saying, uh, I know that you can give me, you can guide me. I know you can fix my marriage. I, I know you can turn this financial thing around. I, I know you can fix the thing that I'm going through on my job. I know that you can take the pressure off of my peers. I know that you can heal my body. I know you can heal the body of my loved one. I know you can protect. You began to pray like that. That's a different kind of prayer, and that's going to get you a different kind of result. Somebody say, be specific. There are times in which we need to be specific. and Tell God exactly what we are believing him to do. Tell God exactly what we need him to do. 
Gospel of Luke has several key distinctive features. One of them is the use of the word immediately. Luke really honed in on this word. And the good part is, as you read uh, through the Gospel of Luke, you get the sense that the Lord can always respond immediately. In Luke chapter 4, verse 39, when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, the Bible says, and immediately she rose up. In Luke chapter 5, verse 25, when they brought Jesus a man sick of the palsy, the Bible says, and immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay. In Luke chapter 8, verse 44, the woman with the, with the issue of blood, the Bible says, and immediately the issue of blood stopped. In Luke chapter 8, verse number 55, Jairus' daughter, the Bible says her spirit came again and she arose straightway. In Luke chapter 13, verse 13, the woman that could not stand up straight for 18 years, uh, the Bible says that Jesus laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight. The Bible says when Bartimaeus spoke to Jesus, and immediately he received his sight. I want you to know that immediately, right now, Jesus can do whatever it is that you need him to do. He's just as strong today as he was then. He's just as powerful today as he was then. His arm is just as great as it was then. Another interesting thing about Luke's gospel is that Luke pointed out the reaction of Jesus' miracles among the witnesses. Write this down. Whenever God performs miracles, whenever God performs miracles, he ought to get the glory on the spot. Somebody say, on the spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes we, oh, I'm going to praise you Sunday. It's Monday. He got to wait seven days, six days. No, praise him on the spot. The, the Bible uh, says uh, that he glorified God. Glory means to praise, to extol, to magnify, to celebrate, to honor, to do honor to, to hold in honor, or to make glorious. And Luke captures this. Uh, in Luke chapter 2, verse 20, after the shepherds saw Jesus laying in the manger, they left glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. They were glorifying and praising God. In Luke chapter 5, verse 25 through 26, and Jesus, after Jesus told the man with the palsy to take up his bed, uh, the Bible says, and immediately he rose up uh, before them and stood up, uh, uh, stood up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. In Luke chapter 7, verse 16, after Jesus raised the dead man during his funeral, the Bible says, and there came a fear on all, and they glorified God. In Luke chapter 13, verse 13, after Jesus told the woman who had been sick for 18 years and couldn't straighten up, the Bible says that he laid his hands on her, and when she was healed immediately, she began to glorify God. In Luke chapter 17, verse 15 through 16, after Jesus healed the ten lepers and one came back, the one of them that came back, the Bible says uh, that he came back with a loud voice glorifying God. In our text, the Bible says uh, in verse 43 that immediately he, re re he received his sight and followed him glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. As a matter of fact, in Luke chapter 23, verse 47, uh, when the centurion uh, saw what was done, uh, the Bible says the centurion uh, glorified God, uh, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. Uh, I'm trying to get you to understand uh, that whenever 
God performs a miracle in your life, you owe him glory on the spot. Uh, we need to get out of the thought uh, that we can only glorify and praise God in church. We need to get that out of our mind. And we need to learn how to praise God in the grocery store. We need to learn how to praise God when you get the test result right in the classroom. You need to learn how to praise God when the doctor's talking to you. As soon as the doctor gives you the report, that's a good time to praise the Lord. We need to learn how to praise God right there in the car when that car pulls in front of you or when you turn and you see two seconds or later that would have been you. You got to keep one hand on the wheel and give God glory with the other. Uh, don't wait. I'm going when I get to church, I'm going to praise God. When I get to church, I'm going to praise God. You will have forgotten what God has done for you by the time you get back here. You got to learn how to give God a crazy praise right there. Because when you start praising God, when you start glorifying God, when you start glorifying God, somebody else is going to praise God. They're going to praise God because you are glorifying God. If you don't believe me, watch. When you go to the store and God blesses you and you say, Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to give you the glory. I just want to give you the honor. Open one eye. There's going to be another believer in there somewhere saying, hallelujah. I don't know why he's praising God the way he is, but it makes me want to praise and worship is contagious. I can't watch somebody else praise God and sit on my hands. I can't do it, Brother Henderson. I got to do something. I got to clap my hands. I got to wave my hands. I got to do something. As a matter of fact, let's just practice right now. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, I'm, you're going to be my praise partner. I'm going to glorify God and you're going to praise God. Now, y'all figure out who's going to do what, well, who's going to give him glory. All right, all those that, go, that are going to give him glory, raise your hand. Now, on the count of three, while you are giving him glory with your mouth, I want the praisers to clap their hand. Are y'all ready? One, two, three, let's give him glory. Right now we need to switch now I want the praises now it's your turn to give him glory and I want those that were praising him I, it's your time to give him give him glory y'all switch now go one two three That's what's supposed to happen. That's what's supposed to happen. One person starts giving God the glory. The other person starts giving God the praise. You can, I don't care where you are. You can be in the emergency room. And when you start giving God the glory, as soon as we hear about it, we're going to start giving God the praise. We're going to praise and glory, glory and praise. And pretty soon, you won't know the difference between who's giving God the glory and who is giving God the praise. On the spot. Let that get in your spirit. Everybody say, on the spot. On the spot, on the spot, on the spot. Every time God blesses you. Thank you, Jesus. And when you hear of a miracle, give God the praise. I told you last week, it ain't always about you. The fact that God has done it for your sister 
means that God will do it. He's still working miracles. He's still healing bodies. He's still turning it around. Come on and give him praise. Bartimaeus, 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 Bartimaeus knew that was his opportunity. And when Jesus walked up to Bartimaeus, he said, what is your one thing? And Bartimaeus didn't stutter. See, see when you have been when you've been a beggar, you don't stutter. Because you're going to be a broke beggar. We, 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 no, 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 no. Beggars know. Uh, will you? Anybody been through something and it, and, it, and it changed your approach to opportunities? When he asked him, he said, he said, Lord. Everybody say, Lord. See, he's praised him already. He said, Lord, I, I feel like preaching a little while longer. I want you to write this down. I want you to, I'm going to preach and teach this at the same time. I want you to write this down. To us, the word Lord is an important distinction. The word Lord means that Jesus is Lord. It means that he is God. I don't know what he is to you, but he's God to me. It means that Jesus is supreme in authority. There, there is no name above the name of Jesus. There, there is no greater, there's no greater authority than Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Christ. And by declaring Jesus as Lord, we predict miracles. Every time we call Jesus Lord, we can expect a response. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in Luke chapter 2, verse number 11, uh, where the, the, the Bible says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 10, verse number 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse number 17 and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Paul said in Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 through 11 wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven and things in earth the and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 1 Corinthians chapter number 8 verse 6 but to us there is but one God the Father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things glory be to God and we by him 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse number 5 for we preach not ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. First Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Somebody ought to help me preach and say amen. When you add the word Lord to your prayer, you get to distinguish 
Jesus. When you add the word Lord to your prayer, you differentiate Jesus. You separate him. And that's what Bartimaeus did. Bartimaeus said, the Lord is passing by. Bartimaeus had never seen Jesus. He had only heard about him. But he said in his heart, Lord, I would receive my sight. So I say to you again uh, that I am expecting miracles uh, in this house. Uh, but you're going to have to uh, predict your miracle uh, because uh, there is uh, a miracle uh, in your mouth. Uh, there is a miracle uh, in your mouth. Uh, you've got to predict it by faith. Uh, there's a miracle in your mouth. Uh, you've got to say, Lord Jesus, Guide me, Lord Jesus. Bless me, Lord Jesus. Give me what I need, Lord Jesus. Take the pressure away, Lord Jesus. Heal my body, Lord Jesus. Help me cope with the grief and the loss, Lord Jesus. Send salvation to my house. Ignore what the people are saying and talk directly to Jesus and say, Lord, Lord, do it. Lord, please do it for me. Is there anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? And you are saying in your spirit, Lord, do it for me. Lord, do it for me. Lord, heal my body. Lord, do it for me. Lord, take the depression away. Lord, do it for me. Lord, fix my mind. Lord, do it for me. Lord, reverse, hallelujah, the damage that has been done. Lord, do it for me. Or maybe you're saying, Lord, do it for them. Do it for somebody else. But either way, you have a miracle in your mouth. Lord, help me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, strengthen my bones. Lord, do it, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. That's the way the old folk used to cry out. They say, Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. We made fun of them, but there was nothing funny about it. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Let that be your prayer. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, I need you, Lord. In the midnight hour. Lord, Lord, Lord. I can't figure out the words to say, but I can remember to cry out. Lord, Lord, Lord. You'll feel it in your bones. You'll feel it in your spirit. You'll feel it in your heart. Lord, Lord, Lord. When you hear bad news, Lord, Lord, Lord. I want to hear y'all cry out from the pews. Everybody say, Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. The next time trouble comes, uh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, the next time fear comes, uh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, the next time the devil shows up, uh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, I believe you can. Uh, I believe you will. Uh, so I'm going to give you glory, uh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, Lord, 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 you can dance on that. Lord, 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 Lord. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing. In the name of Jesus. There's deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Doors open. 
when you call his name. Windows open when you call his name. Things happen when you call his name. What's his name? Jesus. Yeah. There's a miracle in your mouth. Speak it. Predict your healing. Forecast your healing. Foresee your healing. Envision your miracle. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine Jesus. Walking into your bedroom. Sitting on the side of your bed. Asking you. What would you have me to do for you? What you going to say? What, what, what are you going to ask him for? What are you getting ready to pray for? And, and, and before you get discouraged and think it's too big for God, I, I want you to go back in your mind and think about all the other times that you called on the Lord. See, I'm talking to another generation that remembers hearing long, long, long. But, but when, when you heard it, you were just a teenager. But you're not a teenager anymore. When you heard it, your parent was praying for you. Long, long, long. And now, you are praying for your children. Long, long, long. When you call him, he hears you. And the reason he asked Bartimaeus, he knew what Bartimaeus needed. He wanted Bartimaeus to hear himself ask him for his healing. Somebody right here, right now, everybody stand on your feet. Because what I want you to do, I want you to prepare to lift your hands and communicate to God what you need him to do. What is it that you need the Lord to do? Think about it. Be Bartimaeus. This is your chance. You're, you're surrounded by faith. Just like Bartimaeus was. Jesus is here. His spirit is here. And if you think about it, a lot of times we're so busy dealing with our problems, Ariana, that we really don't pray specifically, you know, about our situation. We just assume God's going to work it out. But right here, right now, and those of you that are watching online, I want you to participate in this. I want you to lift your hands. And, and it may not be you, it may be your, your child, it may be your brother, it may be your cousin, it may be your friend, it may be, it may be a safety concern, it may be grief. You know, you know what you need God to do. Come on, get ready. 
Come on now, you can start asking him right now. You can start asking him right now. Just start talking to the Lord. Come on, just start talking to the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. I... I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to, to thee. I need, come on y'all, cry out to God, the oh, I, I need thee, every hour, I, I need thee, come on, you, you can pray, you can pray. Bless. Oh, bless. Come on, point to yourself. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. Tell the Lord, I come. Talk to him. I come to, to thee. Now come on, praise him like you know. He's hearing you. He's hearing you. He's responding to you right now, right now. Right now, there's a miracle in your mouth, but you got to praise him. You got to give him glory. You got to give him praise. You got to give him glory. You got to give him praise. You got to give him glory. You got to give him praise. Praise him in advance for your breakthrough. He's moving right now. He's healing right now. He's delivering right now. Oh! I dare you to praise him like you believed it. Just give him the kind of praise and immediately praise. If you feel better, praise him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that Bartimaeus followed Jesus. In other words, he said, you did that for me. You're not going to get rid of me, Jesus. You've been so good to me. I'm going to keep on living for you. I'm going to keep on serving you. I'm going to keep on walking with you. You've been so good. I'm not going to leave you, Jesus. I, didn't want, I, I want more than just a miracle. I want a relationship. I want more than just a healing. I want to stay with you, Jesus. I want to be with you wherever you go. I want to go. I want to stay with you, Jesus.
prayer is available for you, give us a call at 614-253-7959. You can also join us every Wednesday starting at 6 p.m. for prayer and 7 p.m. for Bible study. Subscribe to our YouTube page today. Go to youtube.com, type in CCAF Columbus, and then hit the subscribe button. Remember to like and share. Are you interested in membership? Become part of the family. Go to our website, ccafcolumbus.org, for more information.